All right, Battletech enthusiasts, we've got some hobby, some incoming hobby here. Fritz, painting my mechs. What are some of the ideas? What are some of the colors? Can you kind of do anything you want? And I, I should say this is also, this question is coming from someone that is approaching the game from a Warhammer 40,000 background, which is another sci-fi-based miniature game where um, a lot of the colors and patterns of the units are very, very well defined. If you want to play Ultramarines, they are blue. They might have elements of gold or some other colors in there based on what company or group they belong to, but they are blue. If you want to play Blood Angels, they are red. Now, that's not to say you can't make up your own chapters or your own units and have your own colors, but it's, it's pretty well established in the lore. How does something like that translate over to Battletech? And if you've played historicals, I, I love Chain of Command, World War II, but I have to say in terms of building up your forces and your collection, it was the easiest thing in the world. I didn't have to make any decisions whatsoever because historically, it's all laid out with that. It was, it was very, very easy. So we kind of have these two extremes. Paint whatever you want, however you want, when you want, or historical, maybe playing DBA for Romans, painting things a specific way. In Battletech, it was always explained to me and how I've always played, and I, and I say that for playing a long time. I don't want to say my meta is like your meta, but there was this idea that we begin with the mechs you're painting, the lands you're building, is it part, it's like a decision tree, is it part of one of the great houses, or later on, the clans, or is it a mercenary group or a, a freebooter, freelance type group on there? That's kind of the first decision you have to make. The great houses all kind of have their own primary colors. There might be secondary colors because certainly regiments on different worlds or different groups on there. And of course, mercenaries like Grey Death Legion are known for a certain pattern on there. So that's, that's kind of the first piece. And while there's a lot of diversity in playing the great houses, there are some limitations. If you go with a mercenary company, and it's one of the mercenary groups in the narrative or one you're making up yourself, you can kind of go wherever and however you want on that. So that's the first kind of entry point in. Uh, the second entry point in, I'd say that there are two types of colors per mech. The first is what I define as parade colors. I mean, these war machines are not just war machines. They're symbols of status. They're projections of power. They have a role in the culture during peacetime, just as they do in war. So what we see are a lot of bright colors, a lot of striping, maybe unit markings on there, uh, literally like a dress uniform parade colors going into battle that way. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes some of these houses want to be known. Sometimes some of these units want to be known, right? They, they want to stand out. So you could paint your battle mechs in these parade colors and play them on the table, and no one would look otherwise. Then there's various camouflage and what I like to think of as utilitarian ways of painting it, much like ships in World War I, you know, very dark colors, cutting the angles, trying to use uh, optics for camouflage, literally trying to break up the battle mech on there. All sorts of camouflage patterns. Uh, a lot of great inspiration. Uh, tanks for World War II, looking at things that way, you could paint your mechs in camo colors. So you could play one of the great houses, have some mechs, you could play Karita, have some mechs painted up like that, and then you could also, while incorporating elements of the great houses, have a totally camouflage type design. That is how I would approach it, but ultimately, there's not many really right or really wrong ways of doing it. Now, I want to add a second piece to this getting down to hobby itself. What I would recommend, and this is something that's interesting, primarily Wargame-wise for years, and my entry point was Warhammer 40,000, that kind of heroic scale miniatures. When I later moved into Ancients, and when I later moved into Chain of Command, which is a much smaller scale miniature, certain paint styles and, and colors need to be adjusted. And uh, certainly I had Battletech miniatures, but I had maybe 
25, 30 miniatures for a long time. That's kind of what I played early on. And as my collection grew, there are just certain things that I would have done a little bit differently based on the scale and the types of the miniatures. And that's, that's what I want to kind of share here. My first group were, uh, I called the Dogs of War on there. Mercenary Company. Essentially heresy here, using Games Workshop paints. Dark Angels Green with elements of white striping, some gray highlights, a wash. Um, very dark camouflage-like colors. Um, the pilot cockpits were blue. Uh, a little bit of jeweling on there, but really just, just kind of straight blue, maybe watered down a little bit, and some white highlights. Very functional, the type of thing that you would want to take a mech into combat painted this way. But the effect on the table was, because of the scale and size of the miniatures, especially playing on a wargaming table, they were a little dark. I was looking for a green camouflage type effect. What, how I should have painted them was for a, a color reference, actually a much lighter green. Um, the difference between playing painting Dark Angels green, I should have painted them Salamanders green. It would have popped more on the table. It would have been a little brighter. So generally, what I've learned over time is the smaller the miniature, the more compact, the brighter I want it to be on there the brighter you want it to be for those those base colors so if you look at um, a type of gray and it's a smaller miniature maybe pushing up more towards the white spectrum on there or a lighter gray i mean certainly uh, art majors and art history majors and and people can put it in much elegant more elegant terms on there but that's what I realized with my first mercenary company. They looked great. There was nothing wrong with them. But I wished they would have popped a little bit more on the table. So moving into that hobby, no right or wrong. You start out. You see where you want to go. You can have your forces broken up in different ways. But I will say, generally speaking, if there is one defined rule... For the most part, every lance is painted somewhat the same. Every lance team member is painted somewhat the same, whether it's the parade colors or more of a utility kind of camouflage on there because they're going to be working together. And as much as there is tech in Battletech and there isn't as much tech in Battletech, sometimes it does come down to iron sights. Sometimes it does come down to visuals on there. And you want to make sure that you're shooting at the right unit and not at your teammate. 